uh, Stardust uh, shows a man with a strong determination to succeed, but also afraid to fail and afraid of mental illness. I would like to know what did you learn from uh, David Jones, the man behind the icon working on this movie? Um, well, I think one of the things that's so inspiring about this chapter of David's life was, is exactly that, this determination he had to succeed. You know, he, this was a time in his life when he, you know, we're so used to thinking about David Bowie as this god, you know, someone who's so accomplished, so successful, so confident, you know, with such poise and such a clear kind of musical identity. And so it was really interesting to go back to before all that and to remember that actually even someone as iconic as David went through a really uncertain, troubled sort of period in his career. Um, and so I think, um, you know, th th that determination he had, you know, to, he'd, he'd had one hit single that was Space Oddity that a lot of people thought was just a sort of novelty record, uh, and then 12 singles that really didn't work at all. And yet, in spite of that, he had this real need to succeed and a need to sort of connect with an audience. And so that's when our film is set. It's about that sort of navigating that uncertainty as a musician setting out on his career. And Danny, as a musician, how much did you empathize with him and also with his uh, fear uh, in front of an audience and uh, uh, his struggle with the music business? Uh, did you reflect your, your experience on his? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, Gabriel's spoken about wanting to find a, a, a real musician to play this role, and actually, um, more than any other parts that I've played, I, I, I could really connect to um, the the place he is in in his life at the moment that we see him in in the film. You know, this thing of Yes, struggling to believe yourself, struggling to find your voice as a writer, as an artist, and also um, struggling with, um, you know, the marriage of art and business and commerce, and you know, and, and and trying to sort of go into record label offices and 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 say, you know, I'm this, I'm that, and them wanting you, them trying to imagine what, how they can sell you, and, and just how uncomfortable that is for somebody who only wants to be this raw, authentic voice, you know, um, writing songs. So all of that stuff was really interesting. And the thing of turning up in another country and playing songs to half-empty rooms and kind of feeling a lack of faith and, and all of that stuff, the uncertainty, uh, is stuff that I've gone through, so that was that was really nice to to have that as a real experience. And in Stardust, there is there is a balance between fiction and and reality. How did you work with Christopher Bell on this aspect? So um, Chris Bell wrote this brilliant script that was uh, that described the sort of you know, journey across America, and the two of us then worked together, and then I worked on the script also on my own to just try and develop the sort of the um, I guess the relationship that David had with Terry, his half brother, because it just seemed to me that this was a this period was defined by such a sort of clear fear of men mental illness for David. You know that fear is so present on The Man Who Sold the World, which is the album David took to America in 71 to tour. And so I just wanted us to, we, we sort of just tried to develop that relationship and that sense of, you know, the importance of Terry's um, mental breakdown uh, on David, you know, the importance of that fear really for this, at this point in his life. And uh, Stardust is a movie about uh, the influences that shape you uh, as an artist. Mm -hmm. I would like to know which are the influences that shape you in music and uh, in cinema. <laughs> um, I mean, lots of people, but uh, a very, f you know, f formative figure when I was growing up for me was Bob Dylan, was, was a huge influence on me. And it's interesting for me that that um, that he was an influence on Bowie as well, and you know, and he has this song, song to Bob Dylan, um, from this same period. And um, uh, I don't know, old. I've I've been obsessed with old um, old blues and 
yeah, like the, the, the genesis of, of, of blues for a long time is like a really important kind of character in, in, in my own songwriting. Um, I mean, I don't know, I don't even know where to begin. So many people. And as I get older, the, the list kind of grows and grows. But um, I, I love going to art galleries as well. I mean, there's many painters that I, I get a lot of inspiration from and writers, novelists. Um, I, could, I could talk about it forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, similarly, there are so many people that have influenced me as a filmmaker, um, photographers and filmmakers. Um, uh, I guess, you know, what was interesting about making this film was to try and create something that felt so grounded in the period, you know, to try and make it feel like it really has the texture and fabric of a movie from 1971 almost. And so, you know, those early 70s filmmakers, you know, from, you know, anyone from Cassavetes to, you know, um, the sort of stuff that um, even Antonioni was doing a little bit later than that. You know, those kind of filmmakers, of course, are, you know, always fascinating to me. Um, but, you know, I, I worked with, we were fortunate in working with the director of photography, uh, the director of photography who shot the film, Nick Noland, um, actually was 80 years old and he you know filmed a lot of these com the contemporaries of David Bowie in 1971 when they were performing <laughs> so it was really amazing to have that sort of uh, a, a generational sort of somebody to link those generations you know and, and make that sort of give it that very period feel thank you so much for your time thank, thank you. you thank you grazie mille